Tiffany is coming up on uh, on deck now. Hello. Hi, hey there. Bonjour. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're ready to go. Uh, so you're going to be talking to us uh, multi-cluster service mesh. Yep, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Um, so then can you uh, share your slide decks? Yeah, sure. I was about to do that. Wonderful. And so you work at solo.io as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay, can, you great. My, can you see my slide deck? We can, and we'll just wait for you to present. Okay, wonderful. I'll um, jump off so uh, you can get started. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. So um, I'm Denis Jano, director of uh, field engineering at solo.io in EMEA. And uh, so I'm going to speak about, um, like you've seen, a multi-cluster service mesh. And I say in action because um, I'll go through some slides and I'll finish with a demo so that um, you can have a look about uh, you know, what, uh, what we, we, we can provide with, uh, with our products. Um, so first of all, obviously, Quick introduction, um, everyone is aware of this move going from monolithic to microservices, nothing new really here. Uh, nothing new as well if I say that uh, now the de facto standard to run these microservices uh, is Kubernetes. And uh, what's interesting is that one of the first thing that people um, needs to do when they start to run uh, application in Kubernetes is to expose them to the outside world. And um, the typical way to do that is just to use like uh, an ingress controller like uh, HF proxy or Nginx. And, uh, and that does the job when you just start. But very quickly, uh, you find out that uh, you need more because um, you want to expose your apps on Kubernetes, but you also want to expose some legacy application running on VMware, for example. You want to uh, expose some application, some functions that uh, you run in Lambda, for example. And also, you want to do more on the edge. You want to do uh, what an API gateway generally provides, like uh, instead of having the authentication managed at the uh, application level, uh, one by one, you want to do this authentication uh, at the gateway level and just pass the information to the application about who is the user that has just registered. And these are just examples, but there are many, many others. So that's kind of the first step. Uh, you want to secure the edge, uh, you look for an API gateway. We have one at Solo that's called Glue Edge, which is by, uh, based on uh, Envoy. And I'm not going to speak about that, but I just wanted to speak about, uh, just introduce this concept because that's generally the first step people follow. And then the next step is how do I enhance the service to service communication here? And uh, basically, um, there are different requirements that are quite common. Uh, one is uh, people want to encrypt the communication between these services. Um, obviously, when we speak about encryption, we speak about mutual TLS. So then you need to manage certificates, and then you need to rotate the certificates. Uh, you want to get some uh, telemetry information. So these are the things that um, people are looking for when uh, it comes to service-to-service -to -service communications. And uh, one uh, way you can do that, and it has been done in the past by um, many people, is using an API gateway for that as well. So that uh, all the traffic goes through this API gateway and you get some telemetry information and, and some additional capabilities. Um, but it doesn't solve the problem for encryption that you still need to do uh, at the application level. And um, it's not really scalable. Obviously, uh, when you start to have more and more uh, services running, then that becomes uh, clearly a bottleneck. So that's why uh, we've seen uh, another approach emerging uh, with um, adding like a, a proxy on each pod. And you see, you probably recognize the uh, Envoy uh, logo here, and it's not a hazard. And I'll speak about that in, uh, in the next slide. Um, but basically the idea is that you get a proxy on each uh, in each pod and all the communications are going through the proxy. So that instead of having to manage the encryption at the uh, application level, you can now delegate that to this proxy. And you can also, because everything goes through the proxy, you can get some uh, nice uh, telemetry information. 
uh, you can uh, enforce some uh, policies. And everything you do, basically, you configure that uh, in a control plane. And uh, the um, pods where you run your proxy is your data plane. So in the control plane, you specify, uh, I want to encrypt communication between these services. I want this service to be able to talk to this one, but not to this one. So you create all these policies and rules in the control plane, and then they are enforced uh, by the data plane. And um, you can see as well here that I put like a, a small, uh, you know, VMware icon. It's because that what what's really also happening now is that the service mesh uh, technologies have started by focusing on um, the new apps running on Kubernetes, but they now extend uh, outside of uh, the mesh or outside of the Kubernetes cluster. So basically, the VMs or bar metal server can become part of the mesh by just having a proxy deployed there. So why uh, Envoy when you see all these Envoy icons? Uh, first of all, Envoy is uh, managed by a neutral foundation, which is the CNCF, the same one that managed Kubernetes. Uh, it's really providing high performance, proven at scale by many, many uh, companies. And uh, it has been um, developed in a, in, a, in a way to be very simple to extend it by adding what we call filters. And it has been really uh, created with this idea of being driven by an API, which is you know really perfect if you think about the service mesh because you have this control plane that send API requests, uh, API calls to the data plane so that um, they get their configuration and so on. So it's perfect uh, fit with uh, with Envoy, and. Uh, and what we see is that um, when people start to adopt service mesh, the next thing they want to do is uh, to allow uh, cross-cluster communications. So if you look at Istio, and we will focus on Istio in this uh, in this talk, which is clearly the, the most popular uh, service mesh out there, um, you can uh, do these things. You can have uh, cross-cluster communication, uh, but it's not easy. Uh, you have to uh, do a few things. First of all, you, you need to federate the identity because um, by default, when you have just one cluster, you want this service to be able to communicate with this service with uh, MTLS. So they both have certificates that they can validate. But when you want this service to communicate with a service in another cluster, um, they cannot validate the, their uh, identity by default because the certificates have been signed by different uh, control planes. So you need to federate the identity. And that's one thing you can do manually, obviously, but we'll show you a, a way uh, that um, is easier. And then um, you also uh, need to configure a lot of, uh, create a lot of different objects to allow uh, this communication to happen. So the idea is that I'll show you how we simplified everything at Solo io with this uh, glue mesh uh, product and uh, I'm also going to to do a demo so first of all uh, before I I jump in the demo uh, I want to speak about this uh, environment that I built so there there is like there are three uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, one that we can consider as like uh, the management plane which is where I have glue mesh running and then I have two clusters where I have Istio running. And um, as you can see, I deployed the, the demo application from Istio that's called BookInfo. Uh, if you, you are familiar with, with Istio, you probably know it because all the examples that you find in the websites are based on, on this application. And uh, the way this application works is that when you uh, go to the main page, uh, that's called the product page. It's kind of a front end that calls some backend services, like the review service, the detail service, and the review service itself called the rating service. And what you can see is that in the two clusters, I deployed the, the application, but um, it's only on the second cluster that I have the version three of the review. And you'll see when I, I will jump on the, on, the, on the demo and I'll show you the, the main page, Basically, the difference between the, the versions is that V1, you will have no stars. V2, you have black stars. And V3, uh, you have um, some kind of red stars. And um, 
What we want to allow here is that we want to allow the product page service to um, send some requests to the review service locally, but some of the requests to the review service uh, on the other side to be able to serve the, the V3. And um, if I want to do that without Gloomesh, then I need to federate the identity, like I said before, so that they have like a common root cert. If I have Gloomesh, uh, I can just create what we call a virtual mesh and it just federates the identity automatically. And then if I want to define these policies to have this communication happening the way I described them before, then uh, in Istio, I will need to create multiple objects, like one that's a virtual service where I would describe I want 75% of my request to go to this host name that is like a, a remote host name and 15% on, on the local cluster, but on V1 and 10% on V2. Then I would have to create like destination rules so that I define the subset which correspond to each version that I want to use. Then I need like to create a service entry so that um, I tell the local Istio cluster how to reach the remote service because Istio is really like uh, um, is coming with a control plane that manages the local mesh, but it, has, it doesn't know is not aware of uh, what's going in the uh, other um, other uh, Istio clusters. Uh, in one eight, it has changed a little bit. There is like an endpoint discovery service that um, can make it a little bit easier, but still, um, you need to you know configure multiple objects when you want this uh, multi-cluster communication to happen. And it's only on the first cluster here. On the second cluster, I have other objects I also need to to create, and that's only for this communication to happen. So imagine if you want to scale that, and if you need that to happen with uh, multiple other services that becomes uh, quickly very difficult to manage. Um, with Gloomesh, uh, basically, uh, we have global object because Gloomesh is really like a management plane for multiple um, Istio deployments. And you can uh, express very easily with uh, what we call a traffic policy, what you want um, to happen. So you can say, when I have a request going to the review service on cluster one, I want to send like 75% uh, of the traffic on cluster two, on the V3 of the review, and you know things similar for the local uh, request. I want like 15% on V1 locally and 10% on V2 locally, and that's it. And when you uh, create this policy, uh, what happens is that it's translated by uh, the glue mesh management plane in the local ST object. So if tomorrow you, you disconnect Gloomesh, it still works because it, it just creates, it just translates this abstraction in um, in uh, Istio objects. And it does much more than that. But I'm, I'm going to start with demo of that and then um, I elaborate a little bit more. So let me jump here. So I have this environment where, um, as I said, uh, I have uh, currently all the requests go to cluster one. Uh, so if I refresh, I should have only black stars or no stars, which means V1 and V2. And um, what I, I will do now is that I will create uh, this uh, traffic policy so that uh, I'm uh, spreading my request across. And just by applying this in my glue mesh management plane, then it will change the way the requests are sent. And you see, now sometimes I get that. Rating service is currently unavailable. And sometimes I will see still the local ones, like here. So the reason why I, 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 I get this error is because now uh, my uh, requests is going there. But um, what's uh, nice with the glue mesh as well is that you can manage also what we call access policies to define which services globally are uh, allowed to talk which, which, which other services in which cluster and so on. So here I made this communication possible, but the review service here is not allowed to talk to the rating service. So what I need is to update my access policy. And you see an access policy is another abstraction, but for 
the security um, side of it. And here, what I the, the current one just has this one. So I say I allow the review service on cluster one to talk to this one, the rating service, but I don't allow the cluster two or the, the reviews on cluster two. So what I'm doing now is just like applying this access policy. And if I refresh here, I see my, my red star. So I see that now it's happening and it's allowed. And um, the other thing that is um, quite uh, nice is that um, we, we did a demo here with um, splitting the traffic, but we can also manage that in a, with failover. So we could have configured uh, a traffic policy and a failover policy so that um, when uh, this becomes unavailable, I want to go to the other side, but otherwise I just want to go locally. So you get like uh, more granularity. And um, so th this is like a GlueMesh is open source. And uh, we just uh, we are just launching an enterprise version that provides additional capabilities on top of what I have just shown you. One of it is that it comes with a, a nice UI where you can see uh, how everything has been uh, configured. Um, so here I can see I have my virtual mesh with my two Istio clusters. I can see that I have enabled global access policy, which means by by default the services are not a lot to communicate together. I have to create the access policies to define what I want uh, to allow. And then you can see the policies like the one I created here with this traffic split with the different clusters. I can also, uh, if I look at uh, the access policies, I can see what are the current workloads running that are impacted by this policy. So that's also very useful because that allows you to make sure that you, you didn't make a mistake. You know, you apply policies and then you want to know uh, what is currently impacted by it. Um, what we have in the enterprise version is the integration with WebAssembly. I'm not going to speak about it now because we don't have time, but it's really become a very, um, um, you know, a very nice trend to be able to create your own filters with WebAssembly. And, and we support that in, in GlueMesh. You can define policy to, de to, to determine where you want to apply which filters and so on. And uh, what you get with the enterprise version as well is like uh, a full airbag system so that you can define roles uh, saying like, okay, this person can create a traffic policy, but this traffic policy that it creates will only be able to impact workloads in the net default namespace, for example. So you could have like a, uh, like a, a namespace admin in Kubernetes, but it would be like a namespace admin globally that will allow this person to manage all the traffic policy and access policies, uh, but only for their own namespace. That's one use case, but there could be uh, many other use cases, obviously. Um, so I want to keep uh, some time for, for questions. So I'm just going to, to wrap up on that. Uh, we do uh, a lot of workshops. We have one tomorrow. Uh, I think we are close to be full, but probably a, a few seats still available. So uh, you can you can go and uh, register if you're interested. This is on, on the glue edge that I spoke about at the beginning, which is our, our API gateway based on Envoy. Uh, if you are more interested by the topic we covered today, there is a full glue mesh workshop that we uh, have planned for uh, the 21st of January. And uh, if you want to register, it's very easy. Uh, solo.io, uh, you go to uh, resources events and you, you can register from here. I also encourage you to take a look at the, the blog. We, we have a lot of blog posts where we speak about you know, our product, but also like some nice Envoy topics uh, with good deep dive on that. And you can also uh, take a look at our YouTube channel. Also a lot of uh, informative content here uh, that you can find and, and, uh, and you could uh, probably like. So I stop here and, uh, and I stop sharing and uh, I'll see if you have uh, any questions. Wonderful, thanks, uh, Denny. I mean, you gave some great examples in the demo as well. So like with that book, bookstore. So do you, when you're seeing the interest in the groups that is then picking up for, whoop, um, is picking up for the, uh, for the, um, uh, for using the service mesh, is it for those sorts of distributed applications at scale? So that so if you've got 
a, a if you're building an application and you want it to be available in multiple areas around the world is that the sort of um, use case you're seeing you said that one of your events next week is filling up for example or tomorrow is filling up so is that the sort of thing that people are jumping in on now where are you seeing the traction so there are several things like i would say like first of all on the mesh side without speaking about multi-cluster i mean when people start to have like many microservices and they start to release new versions quite often and so on they, they they need more insight you know about what's going on you know like telemetry information and they need also to be able to get some security you know to make sure that you know you know when you have like tons of services around you you don't want anyone to be able to talk to everyone you know so you you have to 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 put some you know security and things like that and uh, service mesh is really well designed for that and then another trend which is more on the multi cluster side is we see a lot of people who wants to go hybrid right either you have like kubernetes on premise and kubernetes in the cloud or kubernetes in multiple clouds or multiple kubernetes clusters like many things like that and uh, then the question is how do i uh, allow services on these different environments to communicate together and with the service mesh you can do that and you can do that in a secure way but right. it's not easy and the idea of blue mesh is to make it easy um it's like you know in kubernetes for example kubernetes is very nice right you have multiple kubernetes clusters but then very quickly you realize oh i need a management plane for it and you can look at these solutions like uh, i don't know like a uh, rancher or like uh, you know um, entos or whatever you know you have a management plane for it and and for the mesh is the same you know like istio becomes very popular everyone is starting to use it but it's designed mostly for one cluster you know it has some capability to do multi cluster things but the management is still one by one you know so what you need a management plane for it and you don't have any today that's why we created glue mesh right and then so i mean it's a fantastic uh, it's fantastic to be thinking ahead as far as you know like it's not well i think one of the sort of underlying themes over today has been it's not so much about trying to reduce complexity it's about managing complexity like technology is um speeding up so we don't have that luxury of like just pick one vendor and one platform and just build everything on that anymore that's not how we do things anymore it's much more this hybrid model when you when people are using your uh glue mesh or mesh um services for um uh, service mesh for um uh because they've got hybrid cloud are they choosing hybrid cloud to avoid vendor lock-in or are they choosing hybrid cloud because they've got um on-premise and cloud stuff or because they're wanting to optimize costs what's the what are the drivers for uh, i mean there are level of complexity there are there are many drivers but i would say that they started you know some teams started uh in the cloud and some people were on premise and then they realized that they need to communicate together and they have this heterogeneous you know environment and then they, they find out that the mesh can solve this issue but then the mesh is is even itself is not easy you know and um there is no real uh solution in the market that you know make that easier before that's why we we created that and uh, I didn't mention it, but in Glue Mesh Enterprise, we also come with uh, a full Istio support. So that means that we also help people to deploy their different Istio environments, and we provide support for them. So you know, it's like an end-to-end -end solution. So basically, it's like choose your Kubernetes cluster, whichever you want, wherever you want, and then we help you to put this mesh layer on top of it and to manage it. Wonderful. Great, that's fantastic. Thanks. I will invite you to leave the stage now. Great to okay. see you, Kenny. Thank and you then, very uh, much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye -bye. And I see um, uh, Denny's colleague Miguel has put up some links in the um, group chat. We've got Iraqli, I think, joining.